As always, this video is a um, part of a series. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. I recommend watching the previous videos from this playlist because uh, we're adding on to what we've already learned. Uh, this script right here, uh, although I have renamed it randomplacement.html, and this when I'm done with this tutorial, I will upload this to my website, and there will be a link in the description of this video to the files from this series. Um, we have last week's script uh, where we generated 10 cubes lined up as so. Now, first things first, you see when I rotate and the cubes get far away, and again, I'm rotating the camera here. If I zoom the camera out, you can see the objects getting clipped. Uh, and again, that's because of the clipping we set for the camera when we create it. So let's go into our script here, go up to where we created the camera, and right here we have our near and far clipping. Let's set this to 10,000 instead of 1,000. We'll save that, refresh, and now you can see I can get the cubes much further away before they start clipping. Clipping is a good thing if you have a lot of stuff going on in your scene and stuff in the distance does not really make a difference because clipping will help uh, eliminate stuff that needs to be rendered and help with system resources as your scenes get more complex. So last time we create a variable called mx and said it's negative 500 and then each time we looped we set the x and, y x and z position of our object of our mesh to the value of mx but then we added 110 units to mx each time. Uh, this time we're going to randomly place our objects so I'm going to delete that variable up there because I no longer need it. I'm also going to delete this line where I add to it because again we're not using mx and I'm going to copy and paste this line and change the x here to y. So we have x, y, and z. Left and right, forward and back, up and down. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set random position. Now we could say math.random and in fact we are going to use that. But random through JavaScript gives us a number that is a decimal from anywhere from 0 to 1. So at the very most, random will give us the highest number of 1. And so if I save this and run this, we're back to looking again like we only have one cube. Uh, but actually, there's 10 cubes that are very close in space. If we zoom in here, you can s see that there's multiple cubes overlapping there. Because this cube is 100 by 100 by 100 in size and so when we're moving from uh, using the random number we're moving the next box randomly at the very most 1% of the size that the box is so it, it's a very small amount so what we're going to do uh, is well we can multiply to that number but uh, well let's do that let's say and this will work, all depending on what you want to do. I do recommend downloading these uh, scripts, playing with the numbers, and seeing the different results. So, did that, now I hit a 5. And you can see, we do have randomly generated those 10 boxes. But you'll also notice that they're all over to the right and up. So there's blank areas here, here, and here because we're working with completely positive numbers. So if this is our, our lines of 0 and 0, we're not going to have anything on this side of the line, anything on this side of the line, and definitely not anything down here. So the way, because we always have positive numbers, how do we can get a negative number? Now, multiplying it by 1,000 will guarantee, since this at most will be 1, that it will be within a 1,000 units of the center of our scene, which is good, because if they if they if they were too far off, you wouldn't see them. Uh, if they're more than 10,000 off, they'd be out of your clipping view if the camera's near the center of our scene. But how do we get a negative number sometimes and not others? Well, that's one of the reasons we have a such a small number for our random here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in parentheses because we want this to happen before we multiply by a thousand. We are going to subtract. 
from whatever the random number that is generated. So, we can be array from 0 to 1, but then we're subtracting negative 5, and that will get us some negative numbers in there that we're then multiplying by 1,000. We'll refresh here, and now you can see we have random, if this is the center of our scene, we have some cubes in all areas. Now, let's up the number of cubes we're generating. So we've created 10, let's create 100 cubes. F5, there we go. Now we're really getting the numbers here going here. So I can zoom out. Again, at most, it the highest number that the random number can give us uh, is one, and then we're subtracting five from it. It's going to be anywhere, it will be the highest number we can get is 0.5. And if the lowest number we can get is zero, then the lowest number after subtracting 0.5 is point negative 0.5. So we have this nice range from negative 0.5 to negative 5, giving us a balance of positive and negative numbers. Um, so it's going to be a half of uh, a unit positive, half of a unit negative, times 1,000. So really, at most, these um, boxes are... 500 units away from the center of our scene. So what we can do is let's double that, spread our boxes out a little bit more because at most from the center they're five boxes apart, which means we're going to get a lot of touching. All depends on how grouped you want your cubes. So I'm going to hit uh, F5 here to refresh, and there we go. They're a little more spread out now. And of course, again, you can cr increase that number uh, that you want. Now, all the cubes currently, and again, I'm rotating the camera here, not the cubes, using the trackball library from 3JS. Um, they're all still lined up. None of them are randomly rotated. So let's go ahead and adjust the rotation of these objects. So I'm just going to save time. I'm going to paste in copy and paste some lines here. Oops, wrong line. If I can hit the right keys here. Undo, paste, there we go. And change all these that say position to say rotation. Now you might think, oh great, now we're going to get random numbers for rotation as is. Spell things right. Thing is, this would probably work. Let's see. It does work. But in reality, we are also rotating a lot more than we have to. So although that works, you could also put in much lower numbers uh, than what we currently have in here. So. I'm trying to think of uh, what the rotation numbers are. So even just that, or even probably just doing random. And by rotation numbers they are, I'm trying to think of um, is a complete rotation in this, what, what, what numeric value? So just putting random in there will give you random rotation. If you want to, again, rotate a certain number of degrees, uh, we did that in a previous tutorial. It's take um, pi, divide it by 180, and then multiply that by the number of degrees. But since we're random here, it doesn't matter. So that seems to work just putting random in there. I have seen other people in example scripts use other mathematical equations. I'm not sure m doing random, maybe it's not really giving an, a real, not that there are real random numbers in computing, but maybe it's not giving the full rotation. Maybe none of these will have a full rotation ever because the random number um, never reaches its maximum. But for this tutorial, just saying that to random seems to work well. And of course, so I hit F5 to refresh there. If I hit F5 again, you can see each time I hit F5 to refresh my page, I'm getting uh, randomly, theoretically randomly generated cubes in random positions with random 
rotations. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you found it useful. I hope you're finding all these tutorials useful. Again, a new video every Friday. If you're watching the playlist and you hit a video that's private, it's because it hasn't been published yet. A new one will be published next Friday. If you're enjoying these 3D uh, HTML tutorials using 3JS, be sure to like this video so I know. Also, comment below. Let me know what you think. If you have questions, uh, rather not put them in the comments, come and ask me in the IRC channel. Visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Should be a link in the description. Click on the tab. Um, and it says social networking and click on the IRC and that will bring you to my IRC channel where I hang out uh, regularly. But it's not just me in there. There's other people in there. Uh, just come talk, hang out. And I hope that you have a great day.